please raise the roof and welcome the brilliant Mr. Matthew Horn. Hello, everyone. How are we? I first signed up to Twitter.com when Greta Thunberg had just learned to speak. <laughs> a uh, sobering thought when discussing such an intoxicating online platform. How Miss Thunberg has made an impact in her few years is, to my mind, an extraordinary thing. Inciting the full gamut of emotions and responses, rage, ire, support, joy, love, inspiration, to name but a few. A few and then some that Twitter itself has elicited from its users about a variety of people, places, and things during its evolution. I've been party to that evolution, not quite from the beginning, but from very early on in Twitter's inception, with my then very meager following. It's certainly not vast now by Bieber standards. We used to innocently and idly chat about how you don't see white dog poo anymore. I have observed Twitter grow from its embryonic trite and twee chatterings into the veritable swamp we see now. But I am not here to talk about why Twitter is bad. It can indeed be a very fine swamp, if I can be so oxymoronic. I'm here to talk about why, although it's maybe probably a sort of form of Stockholm syndrome, why it's brilliant, or at least the wonderful and brilliant things that I've got from Twitter in my time using the platform and why I love it. I distinctly remember signing up for Twitter when I was filming the second series of Gavin and Stacey. Um, I tweeted about the aforementioned dog poo from a dressing room in Cardiff, in fact. I've never really used Twitter as a promotional tool as an actor, although I may have been guilty of a little self-promotion and a humble brag or two, maybe in, in the early days. But I quickly learned that plugging one's work or wares doesn't really make a huge difference and can, in fact, deplete rather than augment one's audience and, indeed, likability on that level. But more so, though, as a writer, it has been an invaluable tool, as it is fundamentally a written and writing medium, a tool for learning and laughter and inspiration. So I start with my first example of a superb Twitter user, animal nutritionist turned professional writer at David H. Hughes. Um, I think like a lot of the Twitter comics I follow, I became aware of David through uh, a Rob Delaney retweet. More on Rob later, but for me, David Hughes quickly became a sort of master of the form, the Twitter joke, writing micro-sketches or one-liners that seemed to create entire characters with backstory or multi-layered comedic worlds in, at that time, 140 characters. It was quite some feat, I thought. It was certainly a niche skill. David certainly has his themes of uh, fatherhood, uh, semen, and or Shrek that uh, come and go, so to speak. But mostly his tweets are standalone skits or, or simply jokes. David also wrote a similar thread, which was a purposefully clumsy poetic ode to a fictional woman who's writing in his journal about a girl he likes. Her hair was soft, like really soft hair. Her lips surrounded her mouth all the time. She was like a gymnast, gracefully doing a handstand <laughs> with her feet. <laughs> her eyes were blue like the wind when you draw it with a crayon sometimes to show it's windy and cold outside. <laughs> her hair was long and curly, but I forget what color. I want to say blue, but I think that's the tall Simpson lady. <laughs> her ankles were strong and sturdy, keeping her feet attached to her legs at all times. She had the eyebrows of a livid mechanic. <laughs> David's most famous tweet is about the Last Supper and was consequently stolen for television by a globally famous comic. And it's here now, Judas. Still on for Friday? Jesus, Friday? Judas, yeah, the Last Supper. The, the what? Just supper, just normal supper with the fellas. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I connected with David via Twitter and we not only struck up a friendship, but a writing partnership which continues to this day. David is from the UK but lives in Perth in Australia. He has twice flown over to stay with me and write, and we've written a number of scripts and have a fantastic friendship. Um, and I know that we will write together and have a friendship for life. Neither of those things would have happened without Twitter. The opportunity to connect in that way is, for me, one of the best things about Twitter. Whilst we're on the subject of best things, which is probably a segue I could have written a lot better, but anyway. Whilst we're on the subject of best, I'd like to show you my second favorite tweet of all time. The reason I'm showing it now is because it has a sort of biblical blasphemous theme similar to the tweet that made David Hughes Twitter famous. It's also very puerile. It's the Jesus at the Last Supper. Breaks bread, this is my body, pours wine, this is my blood. 
Opens jar of mayo. I'm just going to stop you right there. <laughs> this is my second favorite tweet, because my favorite tweet would get me into all sorts of trouble. However, if anybody really wants to know my ab what my absolute favorite tweet is, I can be bribed with three Galaxy Note 10s and a couple of TVs. <laughs> David Hughes became a writer. He now writes for Mock the Week um, and various online platforms, and have I got news for you, because of Twitter. Twitter changed David's life, and without wanting to overemphasize a point, made his dreams of becoming a writer come true. The man who introduced me to David via Twitter and the retweet button is the aforementioned Rob Delaney, who I'm sure you're all aware. Rob was already a, a jobbing actor and stand-up before Twitter, but like David, mastered the art of the Twitter joke. And for me, Rob was really the motivating factor for using Twitter as a source of comedy and entertainment. Rob's tenure on Twitter is lengthy, and he nowadays flits between jokes and politics, which upsets a few followers for some reason, but, but for me, he's, he's earned it. Um, tweets such as this one from 2013. If there's one thing my wife hates, it's having rat meat dangled into her cage and then snatched away before she can grab it. Now. Although at first glance, this may come across as somewhat sexist, uh, but it is just silly and arch enough to be quite simply an exquisite joke. What Rob is doing here is creating a character, a fictional one. David does this too. It's a, it's a comic persona. A, a persona or a character on Twitter, if presented without malice, really can be welcome respite from some of the for earnest oversharing that can be seen across a lot of social media platforms. And a fantastic way to develop writing and learn. Certainly for me, anyway. Rob, Rob's success as a stand-up and uh, work with the brilliant Sharon Horgan, at Sharon Horgan, uh, on the multi-award winning catastrophe would almost certainly not have occurred without Twitter, or at least not as quickly or with as much fervor. Uh, this is one of many tweets um, from Rob that confirmed for me Mr. Delaney as one of my Twitter comedy heroes. This, my son saw me collapse naked to the floor and scream into a pillow four times today when I hit my toe on a couch leg. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter has been a great way for me to um, meet my heroes, um, or sort of e-meet them, if you like, uh, and, and receiving messages from these people and connecting with them, the, the likes of Diane Morgan, um, who I'm sure you all know, and uh, a wonderful Japanese stand-up called Yuriko Katani, um, who I'm writing a show with, um, or Sir Matthew Bourne. Yes, I am a secret ballet lover. It's, um, connecting with these people is just really, it's really exciting, and it's simple as that. And, and I know this may all sound a little sycophantic, like in some way I'm sort of touting for jobs myself, but believe me, it really doesn't work like that, if only it did. When it comes to Twitter and the arts, I too am a punter. I, I am the audience as well, and it's just nice to be able to tell people you admire them that you admire them and why you, why you admire them. I mean, most recently, I got to tell the director, well, I didn't, not, not personally, but over Twitter, um, the director of an extraordinary indie film, Bait, um, Mark Jenkin, which is at Mark underscore Jenkin, why I saw his film three times. Um, I don't know whether any of you have seen it, but you should go and see it. Sometimes it's just nice to be nice, and Twitter can be a really good way to do that, to message someone and brighten their day just like following funny people on Twitter brightens my day. Whether they're professional funny people or people who do so-called normal jobs and happen to be funny as well, like Elsa Peljas. I know exactly what to do with the drunken sailor. <laughs> or sixth form poet. I sometimes think people won't take notice of climate change until Ice Cube has complete, disappeared completely. <laughs> These are just funny people who tweet funny things and lighten my day. Sometimes it's nice to tell them, and with Twitter you can. And I know this is hardly a hot take, it's hardly news. But in one of my poorer segues, speaking of news, Twitter also brings us the news faster than ever before. I get my news via Twitter and have for some time now. Some might argue that Twitter has heavily contributed to the demise of journalistic reporting and print media but that's definitely a TED talk for somebody else. The news comes thick and fast, and because of the form, the short form, the Twitter platform, we may have become a little desensitized, and the news can sometimes descend into parody. My foray into parodying was running a couple of spoof accounts. Uh, a rookie error very early on meant that I got rumbled, so felt compelled to deactivate Sharpish, and they now don't exist. However, the one re week that I ran these accounts, I sort of learned more about character development, fictional and in real life, than I think I have in my entire career, and boy, was it fun while it lasted. I did have a laugh, even though it was research, and 
Twitter always comes back round to laughter for me, um, except sport, except sport on Twitter. Uh, do not tweet about sport. Um, before sport brought out the worst in Twitter and Twitterers, uh, Matt Lucas, at Real Matt Lucas, who um, you obviously all know, did a very funny live commentary of a football match. Um, I've been told I've got to read these out, but just imagine that Matt's reading them. Uh, Chelsea thought they'd done another goal, but it wasn't because a lining man done the flag. <laughs> so it wasn't a goal because he said offsides. <laughs> The football is still playing, but there hasn't been another goals yet, but there might be, but just not yet. <laughs> Soon it will be the half-time interval and the audience will all go and have their shock ices. <laughs> the ref blew the whistle and so everyone said, well done football, now go and have a rest, and now the players are going to do a wee or a poo. <laughs> Somebody left a red ball on the pitch, but it isn't, it's the red button from Sky, and the Chelsea keeper is wearing headphones because I assume he wants to listen to Sarah Kennedy on Radio 2. <laughs> Finally, the Arsenal goalkeeper done a foul, but he said he didn't, so he only got a yellow. <laughs> I mean, I'm very surprised that that actually wasn't monetized in some way, um, to be honest, as I would definitely pay for it. Um, which does bring me into the sort of contentious area of debate within the arena of Twitter, which I talked about right at the top, uh, which is comics and comedians giving away their material for, for free. Uh, many often more traditional comics choose not to make jokes, per se, as their work or their material or their content in this format then therefore becomes gratis, which I do respect. However, the flip side of this are the comics and comedians who are actually making careers and gaining followings purely through Twitter, or largely through Twitter, anyhow. Not just comedy writers like David Hughes, who I mentioned earlier, but writer performers and comics who are using Twitter largely as the sole platform for their output performing for free on Twitter. It, it is magnificent and it's something I absolutely adore about Twitter in discovering these people. Um, there are three people who I'd like to show you as examples. Three performers who are building their whole career on their online presence, mainly Twitter, as I said. Um, Alistair Green, at Mr. Alistair Green, is for me utterly compelling and hilarious in his candid and often sat sat um, excuse me, satirical character portrayals. Don't play the video yet, because I just want to say that um, Alistair has built up such a following on Twitter now with his characters that last week he managed to sell out the Prince Charles cinema in a 70-minute show of all these videos. So it just shows you how it can be a literal and figurative platform for jumping off and actually making money out of your talent, which I think is amazing. But you should, uh, well, let's watch Alistair now because it's really funny. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, it all looks good. Pete, Pete, what are you having? Oh, yeah, yeah. To that, I'll be honest, I'm thinking of having a steak. I know, I know I said that, I know, but I'm thinking one night I'm going to be like a flexitarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just for tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ed, Ed, Pete, Pete, nudge Ed for me. <coughs> Ed, Ed, you seen this menu? Just saying to Pete, tonight I'm going to be flexitarian. <laughs> yeah, no, flex, flex, like just for this one night, flexitarian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get, get Tony. Yeah, yeah, just nudge him. Tony. Tony. Just saying to them, like, tonight I'm going to be flexitarian. Because I'm going to have a steak. Yeah. Flex, flexitarian. <laughs> yeah. Get Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just nudge him. Nudge him for a sec. Dave. Dave. I'm going to be flexitarian tonight. Flex. Flexitarian. Hey. Eh? Uh, just a... It's the face, I feel like that. Pete, Pete, it's Dave all right. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give him a round of applause for that? Because I just think that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, somebody else who came to my attention recently is a comic actress in America called Alyssa Limpris. I don't know how I discovered her, it was probably through a retweet. Um, she plays various characters, but one of her running characters is she plays her mum in her vids. Um, and here's, here's one of them. It's 6.05 a.m., let's go, we gotta go, it's vacation, I wanna relax. Bring the mace spray, someone saw a bear. You gotta drink water. Don't talk to me about plastic. I know. Let's go, we're leaving in five. Who brought the cola? Who wants cheese on their burger? It's vacation, I'm not doing laundry. Who's ready to go down to the beach, I'm not packing a lot. Just 20 egg salads each. Oh. Sand's hot. Sand's hot. Careful of the sand. It's hot. <laughs> Going on the boat. Woo-hoo. Uh, 
I've got the clouds. Take your shoes off when you come in. You're dragging in the sand. Beautiful day! Shh, they're not up yet. The bugs are crazy. Who's got the bug spray? They're asleep. They're still asleep. Whose pants are these? You forgot the mace. Someone grab the tube. If you sand these, sit here. I got the chips. Your cousin's asleep. You're gonna miss out on the day. It's getting choppy. It's choppy. Weatherman's wrong again. Let's go. Get out of the bathroom. I paid a lot of money to be wrong, I'll tell you that much. You just put it right on your back. You don't have to carry anything else. Grab the cooler. Of course, the one day we go to the beach, it's freezing. We gotta fill up with gas. Hi, how are you? You put it on top of a candle. Bring the mace, Brett! You gotta secure your things. Look at that bathing suit. She doesn't leave much to the imagination. You're up! I don't care if it doesn't look cool for your Instagram. Wear this. I got eggs. Cooked them 40 minutes ago. They're ready. I caved. I'm doing a load. My friend Teresa, she went to the beach. Pack a sweatshirt. That's PF 75. Did you see your cousin's dad, though? These things? They'll capsize. I'll get one of those, will ya? The sun's coming back out. Yeah. Maybe the weatherman was right. Let's go play categories. Saw a coyote here four years ago. You gotta be careful. <laughs> wow, look at that house. I wonder what he does for a living. Why don't you go play a game with your grandma? It's cold. It's cold for July. We want something to eat. The sun's going down. Don't feed the ducks. Have fun with that. The sun is flying by. You blink an eye, it's August. Uh, oh, absolutely relentless, isn't it? Um, so she does this mom character, but she also does one-off characters, which I feel are so uh, all too real and funny. I mean, I think she's a genius, and I look forward to every time she posts a new video, because I think she has a huge future. This is, this is something I think we can all relate to, unless you really know about cars. Right. But, well, because of the, well, because of the latch. Right, right, right. Yep. Well, if, <laughs> wow. So that's because of it's, because it's the model from, from a while ago. So you can't, right, I couldn't expect the hood to still be, because with the rust too, <laughs> I mean, it's not a, right? It's just a car. <laughs> what can I, you know, so it's gonna, so you'll do, and with the, you'll do the rewires and we'll just, I'll pick it up, I'll, I'll you'll call me. And you can even, you could just keep, you could even just keep the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, really, ladies and gentlemen, that is why I love Twitter for the funnies and a bit of news and sort of meeting famous people, um, my heroes. And yes, when you sign up, you do sort of get stuck, like I mentioned before, sort of online Stockholm syndrome, or maybe I'm just addicted to funny people, I don't know. But it gives you access to everything you could want, or indeed, dare I say it, need, mainly information for me, funny information. To me, that's what Twitter's for. I mean, I'm not on Instagram because I, I don't really understand what it's for, but my talk about Instagram would be a, a lot shorter than this one, and it's for someone else. So, in, in fact, um, if you want an antidote to Instagram's saccharine inspirational quotes, just follow at Retsaw on Twitter.com. Uh, improve your memory by continuing to think every thought you've ever had constantly. I like my coffee like I like my pits of despair, <laughs> bottomless with a black surface that reflects shame. <laughs> and then words mean things, you, what do things mean? And that's enough existential musings for now. For me, Twitter is for information, laughter, and to meet your heroes. And long may that information, laughter, and heroes, like Greta Thunberg, continue. And indeed, the swamp be drained. Because despite its geopolitical leanings nowadays, if Twitter, Twitter ended, I probably would not have been able to see things like this. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. It's really, really lovely that you came. Thank you.